How the Light Gets In is the Institute of Art and Ideas' unique festival, combining days full of talks and debates in philosophy, politics, arts and science, with evenings full of music and dance. Get your tickets for the world's largest music and philosophy festival at howthelightgetsin.org. The story I want to start with is um, about uh, a friend of mine, and I will call the friend Sam, although that wasn't his name. And Sam came to me one day. Sam was uh, an executive vice president, in other, in other words, a very senior, super important, extremely well-paid individual. He came to me one day and he said, Margaret, I think I'm going to leave my job. I said, wow, you know, you've been there a long time. You're in this very powerful, well-paid job. Why do you want to leave? Uh, do you have another job? No. Okay, so what's the problem? Well, he said, you know, I've known for about two years that one of my colleagues um, sexually harasses the young women in his department. And everybody knows. Everybody knows. You know, when we have executive outings, he'll bring one of his latest young women along with him. You know, the rest of us bring our spouses. He comes with one of these women. It's awkward. It's embarrassing. And I feel ashamed of us that we allow this to continue. And I just don't want to be associated with it anymore. So I've decided to leave. And I think at that point, he expected me to say, well done, Sam. You are a man of principle. You get out of this place as fast as you can. So I'm going to pause the story there. Because one ending of it could be, Sam leaves and he gets a job somewhere else and he lives happily ever after. But one of the things I was thinking about as I was having this conversation with Sam is what's going on here? What's really happening in Sam's head? What's he thinking? Well, one of the things that Sam was thinking was, um, I don't like this. It reflects badly on me. I don't want to be associated with it, so go away. That's Sam thinking about Sam. He's thinking, it's not my job to fix this, right? He's thinking, it's not my job to fix this. I'm not head of HR, right? Sexual harassment isn't on my job description. So it's not my job to fix it. He's thinking, well, maybe nobody else minds. And as it happens, Sam is Egyptian, so maybe he's thinking, maybe this is okay in England. What do I know? He's thinking, if I raise this topic, there's going to be an argument. Well, I don't like arguments. Nobody likes arguments. I'm conflict averse. Most people are conflict averse. So I don't want to have this argument. It's much better, easier to leave. So it's not my job. Maybe other people think it's okay. Right? I'm conflict of us. I've tried really hard, so let's say for two years, to ignore it. So I've stayed really busy. So that kind of kept it at bay, but somehow it won't leave me alone. And, um, and it's too difficult. It's just too difficult. So instead of doing anything, I'm just going to leave. So Sam is a textbook example of someone who's willfully blind. He's been willfully blind for uh, two years. And he's still willfully blind, even though he can see what's happening, because he cannot see a single positive outcome, except for him to preserve himself by leaving. And you might think Sam is an unusual example. 
I think he may be having an experience it's quite likely everyone in this room has had. Not exactly the same, but working in situations where there are things that aren't quite right, and it's not quite our job to do anything about them, and we might be wrong, and we want to be a good, we want to do a good job, which by and large we think means let's not have a fight, let's be jovial, good citizens, let's fit in. And I've seen this in so many cases, I've kind of lost track. If you look in detail, as I have at what happened in Rotherham, exactly the same thing. Everybody knows. Everybody knows what's going on in Rotherham. If you look at any NHS scandal, everybody knows, right? In Bristol, they knew that too many children were dying from heart operations. In Mid Staffordshire, they knew that too many patients were dying. You could see them in the hallways. Right. So this is a very, very common occurrence. And sadly, one reason I had to update my book was because there's a whole new book's worth of examples of people who are in the middle of something, and it's not great but they want to preserve themselves, th their sense of themselves as good people, so they want to move away from the thing that's bad. They and they want really desperately not to see it. And that's where Sam is at this moment. It's bad. He can't think of anything to do. It's not his job. It's other people's jobs, not quite sure who, doesn't want to have the argument, conflict is bad, turn away. Here's a second version of the story. <laughs> Sam and I have this conversation, and I turn to him and say, so Sam, I think this is great. I'm really delighted you have such high standards. Um, uh, but I think if you're going to leave, it's really important that you leave with your head held high. So here's the question for you. Have you tried everything? And Sam looks at me and he says, well, I don't know. What would everything be? I said, I don't know, Sam. I don't work here. You work here. I think you need to go away and take a quiet moment with a piece of paper and a pen and make a list of what everything could be. And think about that. About a month passes, and um, I see Sam again, and he's looking pretty cheerful. And I said, so Sam, what happened? How did the story end? You never told me. He said, well, it was really interesting. I did what you told me. I did the list. I wrote down a whole bunch of things I could do or could have done. And then I looked at the list, and there were two or th three things on that list that I thought, actually, they're so easy. I may as well just give it a shot. And that story ends with the sexual harasser being fired and Sam being promoted. So which story do you think is true? The one where he leaves or the one where he stays? Who thinks he leaves? Put your hands up. And who thinks he stays? God bless you. It's nice to know there's some optimists in the audience. Sam stayed. He went, he did his list, he acted on his list, and he stayed. Now, what is so interesting to me about the story is that Sam had power, Sam had experience, Sam had intelligence, and Sam had an ethical sense. He just had absolutely no idea how to use those things. He was blind to his own capacity. He was blind to his own power. He was, on some level, unaware 
of his own capacity. Get your tickets for the world's largest music and philosophy festival at howthelightgetsin.org.